Hello, everyone, and welcome back to the Best PT Podcast, Episode 2.1, Exercise Physiology, Kinesiology, Body Composition, and Exercise Prescription. Let's begin with Exercise Physiology Basics. Energy Systems. Remember, there are three types of energy systems in the body. The first is the ATP PC system, also known as the phosphocreatine system. This system is active in high intensity, short duration exercise where muscle contractions last less than 15 seconds. There is two to three times as much fossil creatine inside muscles as ATP, and the fossil creatine is used to regenerate ATP molecules as the body exercises. The second energy system, anaerobic glycolysis used in high intensity short duration exercise where muscle contractions last between 30 and 40 seconds in duration this chemical reaction is 50 percent slower than ATP PC finally the third energy system used in the body is the aerobic metabolism system which is used in low intensity high duration muscle contractions such as maintaining posture against gravity or aerobic exercise. So these contractions last longer than 40 seconds. Getting into muscle physiology, muscle fiber characteristics, type 1 muscle fibers are aerobic, red, slow twitch with low fatigability, and increased myoglobin and capillary density. Type 2 are anaerobic, white, fast twitch, high fatigability, decreased myoglobin, and capillary density. Within the muscle fibers are two types of receptors, muscle spindles, which are located within muscle bellies, sending information about muscle length and rate of length change, which are used when controlling posture. And then the second type are the Golgi tendon organs, or GTOs, which are located within the muscle tendons. There are approximately 15 muscle fibers per GTO, and the GTOs are sensitive to tension and rate of tension change. Muscle contraction types include isotonic, where muscle fibers shorten or lengthen when resisting a constant load, concentric, where muscle fibers shorten when developing tension, eccentric, where muscle fibers lengthen when developing tension, isometric, where muscle fiber length does not change with tension, and finally isokinetic, where maximal tension change causes muscle fibers to shorten or lengthen at a constant speed. So there's an inverse relationship here. With isokinetic exercises, the more speed there is, the higher the resistance, and vice versa. The slower the speed, the lower the resistance. Moving on to some basic kinesiology. Remember your lever types, class 1, class 2, and class 3. Class 1 levers have the axis of rotation between the effort and the resistance. An example is triceps during a dumbbell triceps extension exercise. Triceps provide the effort, the elbow is the axis of rotation, and the resistance is in your hand with a dumbbell or a plate. Class 2 levers, the resistance sits between the axis of rotation and the effort force. Another example using the triceps, so during a push-up, Triceps again provide the effort, the resistance is once again in your hand, and the axis of rotation is at the elbow. Finally, a class 3 lever has the effort between the axis and the resistance. An example is shoulder abduction raises with weight, so the glenohumeral joint acts as the axis, the supraspinatus muscle provides the effort, and the dumbbell provides the resistance. Class 3 levers are the most common lever type in the body. All right, moving on to body composition, we have densitometry. Two types of densitometry, hydrostatic weighing, the measurement of body fat percentage by measuring water displacement. This is considered the gold standard for determining body fat percentage. However, it is expensive and there is a long setup time. <clears throat> the second type of densitometry Plethysmography. Say that five times fast. Another measurement of body fat percentage similar to hydrostatic weighing except this occurs in a closed chamber measuring air displacement instead of water displacement. You may have heard the name brand of this called the BOD pod. So this is cheaper, quicker to set up, 
but it is not as accurate. Skinfold calipers, the most clinically practical assessment of body fat percentage. The theory here is that subcutaneous fat exists in proportion in the body to total body fat. So all measurements with skinfold calipers should be taken on the right side of the body. You should take multiple measurements per site and retake any measurements if there, are there is a variance greater than one to two millimeters. The procedure to using calipers Pinch with the calipers one centimeter from your fingers. There are two common sets of pinches used. There is the three-site pinch, pinching at the abdomen, the triceps, and the superiliac region. And then there is the seven-site pinch, which is more accurate, pinching also at the abdomen, triceps, and superiliac region, but also at the chest, axilla, suprascapular region, and across the mid thigh. Moving on to body mass index, BMI, essentially measuring the amount of stuff inside a container. So weight divided by height squared. The important thing to know about BMI is it does not differentiate between bone, muscle, fat, or body fluids. If you're performing BMI using the metric system, you're going to use weight divided by height squared, giving your result in kilograms per meter squared. If you are going to perform BMI using an English calculation, it is weight divided by height squared times 703, which gives you an answer in pounds per square inch. Categories of BMI, under 18.5 is considered underweight. 18.5 to 24.9 is considered normal. 25 to 29.9 is overweight. 30 to 34.9 is obesity class one. 35 to 39.9 .9 is obesity class 2, and finally over 40 is obesity class 3. The final type of densitometry is bioelectrical impedance analysis, BIA. The theory here is that the resistance to electrical current inside the body is inversely related to the percent of body water inside the body. So essentially the more body water you have, the theory is that you will have less body fat. This is a very unreliable assessment tool because hydration is very important to this test. Even the smallest bit of dehydration or overhydration can skew the results. <clears throat> Moving on to exercise prescription is the final section of this episode. We have two of the most common loading protocols. The DeLorme protocol is essentially pyramiding up. So you ask the patient to perform 10 reps at 50% of their one rep max. 10 reps at 75% of their one rep max, and to finish out using 10 reps at their one rep max. The opposite technique, the Oxford technique, is known as the taper down technique. It's basically the complete opposite of the DeLorme. So you begin with 10 reps at one rep max, 10 reps at 75% of the one rep max, and then you finish with 10 reps at 50% of the one rep max. And that's it for episode 2.1, covering exercise physiology, muscle physiology, kinesiology, body composition, and exercise prescription. The next episode will focus on joint types and receptors. Thank you.